Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now I know it's been about a month or so since I last posted a video, but very quickly I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you guys that have subscribed so far. It looks like we finally made it over 100 subscribers, we're currently at 130, so I do appreciate that. Thank you once again. And because I haven't posted a video in a while, and I did mean to post one about three weeks ago, it just like kind of got carried away with the New Year's and all that good stuff. I have one more video that's kind of, I guess, become a series at this point, and it's on the whole topic of basically creating and emailing a PDF in Salesforce with Visual Force, Apex, and now that screen flow that we talked about in the last video. And I basically just kind of want to finish off that topic and kind of like summarize everything that we, we've kind of learned up to this point. I think in, the, in this video, I talked about that it might be possible to make our solution a little bit better by using something that was called an invocable variable. So I think um, I'll walk through all the code that I wrote for that and all the changes I made. And I, I don't remember exactly uh, the, you know, the code that I wrote here and the code that I have now, like what the differences were. So I'll kind of just like walk through everything that I have as a final solution instead of like creating the code, you know, as, as we're going. So I hope that's all right. All right, let's jump into it. For those that might not be too familiar with the previous uh, video, and I'll link it down in the, the description box below if you are interested. But essentially what we did is we created a flow, as you can see here, we're on the an account record, and we created a visual flow or a screen flow rather, that will take an email as an input and a optional message. And basically it'll take whatever is in this message box and it'll add it to our visual force page, which gets rendered as a PDF. And that PDF itself gets sent to some email that you indicated right here. That's basically what, what was in the, in the past video. And what we had talked about doing was finding a more efficient way of getting these, or rather getting this message variable that we, that the user inputs here into the backend or basically the visual force and this, the apex code. So just kind of to walk through it, um, I created a brand new flow. I believe I called it test invoke variable. And as you can see here, I just to kind of go through it real quick, we have a screen element, which if we click into, you see here we have our email input and our optional message input as well, which then leads to a decision. And basically the decision is if the email, the value of the email input is not blank or not null, then it goes into the this other thing right here. And this looks a lot, I guess, uh, quite a bit different than what we previously had. If we jump into our code, which again, we're using Visual Studio Code to do so. Um, feel free to watch the previous video if you're not sure how to get this set up. You'll see here, we still have our invocable method so that itself hasn't changed. You see here, we're still creating a page reference to that Visual Force page right here. We're still passing in some input but you'll see, or some parameters, but you'll see here, I'm doing something a little bit different, which I'll kind of get to. And you'll see here that, that the, our argument is now quite a bit different as well. Before it was a list of list of strings. And now we're getting in a, this list of, P, of PDF args, which I'll go over in a bit. But you might recall if you saw the previous video that in our constructor is where we actually did all our SQL queries to get the information about the account, the information about our opportunities that we won and the ones that we lost. But you'll see here that now we're not doing that. And that is because I figured if we're going to be using this concept of, if I open this up right here, you'll see here we're using this concept of invocable variables. Well, I figured maybe we can save ourselves with SQL queries and we can do them on the on the screen flow side. And if we jump back into the flow, you'll see that's basically what these little elements are doing. So you'll see here, uh, if the decision actually passes through because the email input was valid, uh, we're getting the records. And right here, what we're getting are we're getting records where the stage name is equal to closed one. And we're getting the records where the stage name is equal to closed lost. And lastly, we're also getting the account record of the one that we're basically interested in generating this PDF for. So you'll see here that I'm getting all this information, the name, billing street, billing, city, billing city, billing state, and so on and so forth. So basically by doing it in the front end, we no longer have to worry about uh, doing the SQL query in the Apex code side of things. So, I mean, it's not really necessary to have moved the code over, but I kind of just want to show you guys uh, that it is possible to do so. And we can actually indeed pass in this information that we're querying in this screen flow back into the Visual Force page. So with that, uh, one thing that we do kind of have to uh, do a bit differently is if we click into the Apex action here, you'll see here before we were passing in a collection variable. And in a nutshell, what a collection variable was, it was basically like a list of list of, of strings or yeah, a list of list of a primitive, which probably was just a string. 
And that's what we did in the previous video. But instead of doing that, what I did now is we're passing in each variable that we got as a separate variable, essentially, as, as you can see here, we have for account, we're getting the account details for email, the email value, so on and so forth. And instead of what we did, if we go back into the code and we scroll down, we'll see here that inside of our invoice PDF controller class, we have an inner class. And it's this inner class, all it contains are, var are variables that, ha that are public and they're all strings or strings account. You'll see here we have a bunch of different um, variable types. So strings, accounts, list. So it's not really limited, but you'll see here we have an annotation above it. And this annotation basically lets our screen flow know that this class that we're referencing, or rather, yeah, this, this, this class that we're referencing has some variables that should be available to the screen flow itself. So what I did, I created a variable for each of the things that I, I care about having in the Visual Force page. And I just left it at that. So basically we're just declaring the variables. We're not initializing them because that's not the job of this class. But once we have this inner class taken care of and, we, and it's been created, what we wanna do is in our generate PDF, which is the invocable method that's actually gonna be utilized in the screen flow, we want to say that we're going to receive a list of those PDF args. And by doing so, as you can see here, now our screen flow knows that we're going to pass in a list of, of this type of variable, which is a class, and it's going to contain these different things. And the screen flow is smart enough to know that we're going to have an email, a record ID, a message account, you know, win op list and not win op list. So that's kind of how we can get that connected. And again, just to kind of show that one more time, if we jump into our screen flow, we'll see here in the apex action that we have our input values that are being essentially tied to that inner class itself. And they're going to be passed into that invocable method as, as an argument. So with that, um, most of it, it's kind of the same, but let's go ahead and finish covering in the code. Back in the code, you'll see here that we're still creating a page reference to that visual force page like so right here. And we're still passing in a parameter in the URL. You'll notice here though, I did something a bit different. And instead of just passing in like the raw string as a parameter, I decided to, to serialize this uh, list of this type of class that we received. And what this kind of lets me do is something pretty neat. So essentially, um, and I think we can kind of disregard this code. This is pretty much a standard boilerplate that actually just does the whole emailing of the PDF. But like how we talked about in the previous video, when you create an instance of this page reference to this visual force page, we jump into our visual force page, right? Which is right here. And we have this controller, right? Basically the invoice PDF controller. And when that page reference is instantiated, well, it has to call the controller's constructor. So we go from this line of code back into or into for the first time, the invoice PDF controller, which is the constructor of the class. And you'll see here, that the constructor it's doing a few things uh well probably the most important one is that it's getting the parameters as a string value of from the the, the params that were passed in from this line of code right here and this is just kind of like the, the the standard um method of getting it we're getting the parameters from the current apex page and we're just getting the string value of that and then the cool part is once we do that i'm basically going to deserialize it the, those params that we received uh, using the following. So we're just realizing it and we're passing in the class definition of the PDF args class that ha that is right here. Uh, and as you can see here, we're, this is how we, we do that class definition of, of that. We're going to de uh, deserialize it using the JSON um, object. And then we're going to make sure that it gets cast into that PDF args. So essentially what we have after doing all of that is we have an object of type PDF args that basically looks like this. You can think of it as an object that contains all these different values. And now they're pretty easy to use. To use them, we can just say like PDF args dot email to basically access them. And that's essentially what I'm doing. You see here that now, or before we had all those different stock queries, now we're essentially just using the this keyword because of, of all the variables that we defined up here outside of our constructor. And we're just tying them in with what we received from that screen flow uh, via this mechanism. So you'll see here that this account is, is now equal to whatever we got from the params that was passed in from the invocable method, which was passed in from uh, the user or rather that screen flow. Some of those elements were from the user. Some of them were from those elements that did the SQL querying and, all, and such. But essentially, and I know I'm kind of rushing this because I don't have much time today, but 
essentially by by doing it this way, we're able to, I think, really kind of clean up our code and not have you know any any, any unnecessary cycle queries because we're doing them in the front end. And now this Apex class is just kind of in charge of kind of putting everything together without so much code. And like I said in my previous video, like this is still kind of a concern to me. And again, I don't remember if there is or isn't a limit of how many characters you can have in a in a URL parameter, but I've tested it so far with um, all of this data, and it was still able to propagate and get and get that Visual Force page rendered as a PDF properly. So putting all that together, and like I said, if you haven't seen the previous uh, video, you should because it's kind of like I'm going with the assumption that you've seen the previous video. So if you haven't, a lot of this probably won't make sense. So feel free to do so. Um, but once we have all this together, everything is pretty much going to look the same. If we jump into our account record like this right here, uh, let's go give this a message and we'll say, hey, now like that. And then this one, I'll use the same email we've been using the lads podcast. 42 at gmail.com. Like that. And then we'll click on email invoice right here. And you'll see after a few seconds, oh, we don't really have a message that's a success, but it looks like it went through just fine. And if I open my email, you'll see here that pretty much a few seconds ago, we got this email right here. And if you open the PDF, you'll see here at the top, this is where we, in the last video, we had put that message uh, variable to display. And you'll see here, we have the account information. So this is the, the billing city, city, street, state uh, zip code, and the opportunities that belong to those accounts, ones that were the one and the ones that were not one, those being invoiced and not invoiced. So just a very quick video kind of explaining and hopefully trying to wrap up everything that we kind of learned in the past. And I'm kind of making this video just because I myself didn't really know about invocable variables that we kind of went through. So this is kind of cool. Again, I don't know if this is the most optimal solution for, you know, what we've been talking about for the past couple of videos, but it's an interesting one nonetheless. So I hope you guys found this interesting and I'll catch you guys in the next video.